Dry tonight with long clear spells and mist forming as winds slacken. Overnight lows of 2 to 6 degrees generally. Much colder in Ulster though, between 2 degrees and 1 below with a touch of frost. Now you're up to date on News Talk. The News Round on Off The Ball with Gillette. Put your best face forward with our new and improved razors. This is News Talk. All right, you're welcome along. It is Thursday's Off The Ball. Nathan with you until 10 o'clock. We've got a busy show ahead because it's been a long day in the world of Gaelic games. Everyone will have woken up this morning and seen the front page of the Irish Independent that includes photographs of Johnny Cooper and Brian Fenton engaged in a training session from yesterday morning with the Dublin footballers out at Inch Falls uh, GA Club on the north side of Dublin. Since then, the GEA have learned an investigation into this breach of COVID rules. The Gardaí are investigating this breach of COVID rules. And in the past hour, Dublin GEA have suspended their own manager, Desi Farrell, for 12 weeks for this breach of COVID rules. We're going to have reaction after 8 o'clock from the Irish Independence, Cullum Keyes, and also from the Offaly football manager, John Mohan, as to what the long-term implications will be, both for the Dublin footballers and for the championship as well. We'll also, in that 8-9 to nine hour, hear from Keen Lynch. Uh, the Limerick Curler will chat to us about how their preparations are going and what their plan is for the return after their All-Ireland final success in December. Lots of football to come your way as well. John Giles at half past seven. On the week that was for the Republic of Ireland, we'll check in with Stewie Byrne as well, ahead of Shamrock Rovers against Dundalk in the League of Ireland tomorrow night. And Rafa Honigstein, well, if you thought things were bad for Ireland. What about poor old Germany, beaten by North Macedonia in the World Cup qualifiers? There will no doubt be ramifications from that, so Rafa Honigstein will talk to us about that and about Erling Haaland's future with lots of reports today that his representatives were in Spain to meet with Barcelona. So we'll check in with that. 53106 is the text number at off the ball. On Twitter, Richie McCormick is with us. Evening, Richie. Nathan, how are you? I'm okay. And Joe Malloy is there as well. Evening, Joe. Jens, how you doing? So, this story on the front page of the Irish Independent, when I woke up this morning around 7 o'clock, as usual, did that terrible thing and looked at my phone first thing and went, Hmm. oh, this Hmm. is not going to go down well. And to be honest, I was quite shocked. Um, Above... And I don't know why, my um, own prejudices, I would have thought that the Dublin footballers would have been the last team in the country that would have been caught for this. But there it is on the front page of the Irish Independent, Johnny Cooper and Brian Fenton at a training session, photographs from yesterday morning, first thing, half six in the morning, nine Dublin footballers taking part in a collective session. It looks as though it's a non-contact session, but there's no question it's an organised session. There's a fitness coach there putting them through their drills and the fallout has already started. It feels somewhat unprecedented, Joe, that a county board has suspended their own manager, but Mm. Dublin have obviously tried to get out in front of this this evening and have suspended Desi Farrell for 12 weeks. Jack Chambers, the Minister for Sport, was on News Talk earlier and said that this doesn't put the championship in jeopardy. Though, if you look on the Dublin County Board website, the first story on that website is still the warning from just a couple of days ago about collective sessions and the potential ramifications that could be there if clubs were to break it uh, from uh, Tom Ryan. So again, it says it should be noted about all the dates, obviously, that we're looking at April 26th for pods of 15, but April 19th, so we're only less than three weeks away from an official return. But breaches Mm -hmm. in this context will not only be dealt with under our own rules, but would likely put the broader plan to return to activity in serious jeopardy. When he was writing that, I'm sure he didn't imagine it would be the most successful team in the history of the GAA that would be the ones to go and break that. What have you made of it? Um, Yeah, I mean, surprise, absolutely, as well. I'm I'm amazed because it just feels like it's so needless on their part, you know. I suspect they're all keeping their fitness up themselves anyway and they're hitting high markers personally and they're probably running around the field at times on their own with the football and the league's coming back very soon and that gives them ample time to prepare for a championship. So I'm just surprised they took that chance, took that risk at a GAA field where there's always the chance you'll be spotted. So amazed at that, first of all, a bit like you. And then I think you'd have to say the way they've got out in front of it has been good. The ban of 12 weeks is more than Paddy Talley got, for instance, when he appealed his. So there's no nonsense excuse making or this is a misunderstanding or what you've seen isn't what you've seen. 
And I think that's good. So come out, hold your hands up. It's a serious ban for Farrell. It's a massive blow for him. And yeah, just overall surprised it happened. Not not in any kind of moral way, just on a logistical, this doesn't. This isn't a smart thing for us to do kind of way. How stupid can you be to rock the- up in your Dublin branded vehicle, several of them, to train together and not think that somebody isn't going to spot this. And clearly it wasn't the first time, considering the Irish Independent got the tip off that this was happening, so knew they were going to be there. But to rock up, if you were trying to keep it secret, you don't drive up in your Dublin branded vehicle. How they thought they were going to get away with this, Richie, I have no idea. Yeah, that's the thing. It, it's the, the thought that this isn't just a one-off. Like You would imagine that they haven't just two weeks out from the lifting of the suspension of inter-county training uh, decided, to, we'll get ahead of the ball here and we'll, we'll do a bit ourselves among the, the nine of us or whatever was up there uh, in Bal Griffin. But like, it paints a broader picture of what's going on in the country because it kind of went under the radar yesterday and I had it in the news round too that in West Cork, there was a club down there is under investigation from the Gardaí and from Cork GEA as well for a pretty similar situation. So that club, which is still unnamed, obviously enough, and we don't know how they're dealing with that situation down there, like there are clubs in West Cork at it. You know, I'd imagine there are clubs up and down the country in some way, shape or form. I'm not going to point, paint the, uh, point the finger on anybody because that'd be a fool's errand, but it's happening. And the question is, why is it happening? And that's the uh, the thing that I think the GEA would need to get a handle of and need to get a hold of because it's not just limited to Ronan McCarthy and Paddy Talley and to Desi Farrell. It's going on around the country. Of that, you can be absolutely sure. And it just, like, oh, I, I, hate, I hate going personal on these kind of things, but, like, they, people have today have been pointing out, going, this is a non-story. Why are you making such a big deal of this? You're the back and training anyway in a couple of weeks. The rules are in place as of now that they can't do this. Like, I only saw my ma for the first time since October today, mm. you know? That, and I was following rules. Like, am I a gobshite for doing that over the course of the last four or five months, whatever it's been? I'd hope not. I'd hope that I was actually just following the rules to uh, look after her safety and look after her health and pretty much everybody around her as well. And that's essentially what has been missing here is that the lads might think that, yeah, they're safe and healthy and in a group they're all safe and healthy and that they kind of know each other and maybe one or two of them live close to each other if they're all gathering up in Bal Griffin. But we don't know what their circles are outside of that. We don't know who else they're dealing with. And just the slightest thing can pass this on to somebody and they can be vulnerable. And just because we're a year into it and we're sick of it doesn't make the ramifications of catching this disease any less serious. You're right. And it is impossible to argue against that point when you talk about your own personal circumstances. And the second you start talking about people missing family funerals, not being able to visit sick relatives in hospital, we've all heard the terrible stories the length and breadth of the country and when you compare what the Dublin footballers have done with that well suddenly it feels as though this is a stake through the heart of the people of Ireland the way they have conducted themselves it is nine very fit young men not engaging in contact training keeping themselves fit breaking the rules absolutely breaking the rules but do we need to keep a little bit of context, Joe, as to yeah. what they've done here? We do. Yeah, we do. Like, Richie speaks very well there, and it, you couldn't argue what he said. This is 100%, so don't confuse him saying this is 100% a legitimate story and, a, you know, great scoop for the Irish Independent, all of that. But there probably is a degree whereby, I don't know, people also see it as there's a degree of curtain twitching, gotcha, aspect to these kind of stories the reality is nathan i pass I, all week this week i've passed 11 aside games in my local park i'm not gonna name the park i don't want to get people in trouble but there's full-on 11 aside games uh two la- you know a bunch of lads they've obviously agreed what color jersey you wear what color jersey will wear and they're playing away in and imagine, them, i don't mind and a, that and and, and listen, rent, it's breaking and the rules again it's breaking the rules yes it's breaking yeah. the rules and if this was a photo of Johnny Cooper and Brian Fenton running into each other in St. Anne's Park and having a kick around and having a chat and you could, the word mental health will come up a lot around those people yeah. that they just need a break. They are there to make themselves better I'm, Gaelic I'm not, footballers I, for the senior championship. I understand. I'm, I'm not excusing this. I'm just reacting to your question, which was about keeping it in perspective. So I'm trying to keep it in perspective as well because that's the point you're making. So that is the wider perspective. It's a group of lads at the bottom of the pitch. They're training away it's not good. I mean, I find the vaccine shenanigans far more irritating, I have to say, and more of an outrage, but 
I can see why this is a story and a legitimate one at that. But look, is there a, a social fabric here that has to be maintained? Yes. Do the Dublin footballers embrace their role model status and make a point of having a social conscience? They absolutely do. And they have done that publicly. Are there blaring inconsistencies and frustrations with the rules? Yes, but the fact is they're there. And so everybody has responsibility to frontline workers, their teammate, Jack McCaffrey included. I'd, you know, you wonder what he's made of it. Uh, responsibility to everybody who's out of work. We have to suppress this thing and do all we can to suppress this thing. So when people have sacrificed, as Richie has not seen his mother since October, or sacrificed funerals, as uh, you rightly mentioned, and much more besides, then uh, it's a slap in the face. People can feel foolish for obeying the rules and it's damaging. So I think those two things can be true. You know, that's mm. that's where I am on it. And look, 12 week ban is serious. <sighs> But like beyond that, I mean, what? where do you go beyond that? Do you want to hold the players over this for the rest of their lives? No. Like, so look, I'm, I'm, I'm a both, I, I see both sides. I'm somewhere in between. It's, it's serious. It's legitimate. Did action have to be taken? Yes. Has the GA had issues over the last year? Yes. Um, should it define the careers of, of Fenton and the others? No. No way. No. No. And, 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 and nor, should, nor and, should it be, to be honest with you, nor should it be four to six pages at the start of a newspaper. Like, it's a story. I don't think it's necessarily... I think it's always as, going to be big when it's the Dublin footballers and it, the reputation it, that they have. The fact that they have got this story is always going to be front page news. Front page news, yes. The, like, the first six pages as if it's like the Daily Mail covering Meghan Markle. I don't think so. That's probably over-egging it a little bit, and I say that even as somebody who's been, you know, sticking as rigidly as he can do by the rules. I think yeah, that's probably I, I, where I'm people. Not, have I'm not surprised finished. they got that level of coverage, considering how big no, a deal the Dublin they're footballers are. Incredibly high profile. They're incredibly high profile. You're caught rotten. Everybody's interested in it. We're talking about it at the top of the show. Of course we are. It's a big story in OTBAM. Like you, I, I can see why it's a huge story for and sure. In, in a way, Joe, you probably touched on it there. Their reputation, the integrity. All the mm. conversations that have gone on around Dublin football and resources and investment, the one thing that nobody has ever questioned actually is that group of 15, 30 that have come through over the last five, six years and the way they conduct themselves and how that has led to this reputation has been role models for so many people and so many sports people. And maybe the greatest punishment is actually the hit that is going to be taken yeah for that so we can suspend them for 12 weeks they can be taken out of Parnell Park Crow Park whatever it is but actually an awful lot of people will look at this group of Dublin footballers differently because of what they were caught doing yesterday morning and that's everyone's individual right to do that I don't massively while still thinking it was a big error of judgment if that's possible I mean again to reiterate the point at the top I'm amazed at just the stupidity of the decision mm. and I'd be you know let's get more information um, you would presume Desi Farrell knew about this, given he's been banned for 12 weeks. Uh, was pressure put on the players to attend, I wonder? Were they told, look, fellas, be there mm. or you're not in my squad? I think that's, you know, interesting. Well, Richie so, touched on that. I think that we yeah. have seen, we often hear about the pressures that are put on inter-county players over the last decade or so. We've really seen that here, that there is an expectation that you will go and above and beyond to be an inter-county footballer. You've got to be there even when you know there's the possibility of something like this happening, which is a very unfair position to put players yeah. in, regardless of whether they want to be there or not. The responsibility of the manager is to say, yes, we'd love to get a head start. Yes, we know Kerry are coming at us this year, but we're yeah. going to do the right thing. And again, I just don't see really what the major benefit was of doing it together like that, as opposed to just, lads, modern communications, here are your markers. Mm. This is what you have to hit. Take, do your own ball work. Here's a few drills you have to do. Do them with intensity. You're a winner. We can trust you to do them. We'll see you in two weeks. We have the whole league campaign. We have the whole championship, you know. So that sense that it was all very needless, I suppose, um, lingers. I, I think most people, Nathan, will think, yeah, it was a big mistake, a silly mistake. Maybe in the climate, people feel they can start to loosen the, the leash a little bit. And so I, I, I don't see them being condemned and all that kind of stuff. I mean, look, we'll, it'll be very hard for us to strike the perfect balance to satisfy everyone between this is an outrage and this is not a story at all. I well, think the vast majority are somewhere, you know, in between. Well, I'll go to our texters, Joe, who are... They're a uh, reasonable bunch at the best of times. Exactly. Uh, Pete keeps it simple. So much for the punishments for Down and Cork being a deterrent. Uh, Cork manager Ronan McCarthy, by the way, did get a 12-week suspension after that Cork team-building session on Yall Beach in early January, which again feels Which, different because where we were in early January and heading for thousands of cases a day I, 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 but on that on that I, I, I can't remember if it was Ronan McCarthy's or Paddy Talley so excuse me one of those two bands was 
if the date of it beginning was essentially the date of the last hearing. So it would have started, I think, in February, early February, and continued on. So the ban will have been served by the time the league starts. Hi, men. I'm a dub. Believe they have to be kicked out of the championship this year. It's bad cheating. A Dublin session covertly organised, not a club session. 12 week ban for Farrell means nothing. Kerry, Mayo, Tyrone, Tip, or whoever will have an asterisk against their victory, but they'll have it still. It's the only way to deal with it, says Jim and Dumboyne. Dave from Dublin says the Dublin County Board have shown great leadership here by banning Farrell instead of what happened to the Cork and Down managers who appealed their ban imposed by the GEA to the CHC. Neither of their county boards put any sanction on their manager, uh, which I would agree with that, that at least they've got out in front of it and didn't Mm. try and drag it through as far as they could when clearly they were in the wrong. Uh, This story is such a load of bullshit. A few lads kicking a ball in the open air. What a state this country has become from a non-GEA fan, says Ed, who... I think would have a lot of people who may agree with that, but also a lot of people have stuck by the rules and have sacrificed a hell of a lot for the last year to see players, as we say, not doing this because they needed a break, because they want to get a head start for the inter-county season. Uh, Dublin County Board suspend Desi. Are they trying to say they didn't know the squad was training then, says Anna? We listen, we, we don't know that. Uh, what's the overstatement? Where is the extra context that I'm missing? If I see Egypt's going into shops without masks or Egypt's hanging out in groups, are fellas at a Dublin GEA training session, should I not just be pissed off, says Jared. You're perfectly entitled mm. to be pissed yeah, off. Like, you are. You, are, you can sure. react to whatever way you want. Uh, typical news talk, defend the dubs. Which I dare wow. say is the first that's time that text first time has, has ever wow. come in. <laughs> Listen, I'm uh, wait till eight o'clock and we're going for throwing them out of the championship and m- maybe strip <laughs> maybe strip them of the last one as well. God, you were mocking on the other side news. Uh, I've been um, I've been recording interviews a little bit out of the news loop a little bit all day. Are people calling for them to be kicked out of the championship? Is that a thing? No, I don't think no, so. No, so. yeah, I, I think because it's come so soon after that warning came from Tom Ryan that any breaches could put the return to play in jeopardy. Yeah. Uh, it seems as though from listening to Jack Chambers that's not the case when I followed this first this morning I thought quite early there was a balanced enough reaction but there was always a worry that this could escalate quite quickly and that if comments from senior politicians went one way that we could be looking at missing out in the championship because of this but it doesn't look as though uh, that is going to be the case uh, Sean says lads have the dubs not shot themselves in the foot twice by self-imposing a 12 week ban because surely the GEA will have to implement a separate ban or else they look weak the GEA can't set a precedent that county boards get to decide the length of bans I assume the GEA give a 12 week ban and they uh, run side by side unless uh, Desi Farrell faces spending the entire championship away from the job which here quite possibly could happen training at dawn in a hidden away GEA club rather than a kickabout in St Anne's Park at noon proves that this was a was willful and deliberate banned the whole mm. lot of them says Sticky in Drimna I, I think no, it's the, clear it was willful there is and that. deliberate yeah there, there is that there was a degree of uh, trying to keep it on the down low so that's an acknowledgement in itself that they knew it wasn't a great idea again just so surprised you know I'm sure in the jigs and the reels we'll find out the thinking but just amazed they thought this was a good idea the news round and off the ball on News Talk is with thanks to Gillette. We don't just play the game, we change it. Gillette made of what matters. We spent a lot of time on this, Richie, but do you want to remind everybody exactly what's happening? Yeah, Dublin GEA suspending senior football manager Desi Farrell for 12 weeks this evening. Gardaí and the GEA are investigating after a number of Dublin footballers held a training session in Balgriffin. Among those players pictured at Inchfell's GEA club were footballer of the year Brian Fenton, Johnny Cooper and Brian Howard. The GAA say they're extremely disappointed and frustrated by the incident and could meet out punishments of their own. Dublin GEA says management and players have apologised for what they've called a serious error in judgement. Speaking on this morning's OTBAM, former male footballer David Brady says the incident needs to be taken seriously in light of what everyone else is enduring. That's nothing to do with sports, Aaron, you're right. This is the way we live and people have missed very, very important things in their lives and milestones in their lives. And as you say, funerals. Um, that's 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 how you break it down and that's the simpl- simplistic part of it, to be honest. Um, you know, I, I, I should be in Bellin' at a funeral today, I'm not. Um, but it's that's the thing. Um, there's none of us perfect. Um, there's none of us that have stayed within the parameters 100% of the time, all the time. But um, this is this is a national story from the most successful team in, in, in the history of, of GEA that have been uh, identified as, as breaking a number of rules. And um, again, it's it's um, it's, uh, it's it's disappointing. And it's, 
look at whether it's whatever the repercussions will or the 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 the, the suspensions handed down it's um that's not that's only immaterial we're going to have a lot more on this after 8 o'clock. Colm Keyes of the Irish Independent who broke the story is going to be with us and John Mohan as well, uh, the Offaly football manager. We'll get his thoughts. But Richie, Bernard Byrne's been talking today because he makes a fairly valid point. A lot of the conversation mm. around sport returning is around outdoor sports, the three main sports, and not a lot yeah. of thought been given to everyone else. Yeah, this came in uh, late last night. Basketball Ireland CEO Bernard O'Byrne claiming indoor sports have become a government afterthought. Tuesday's announcement of an easing of restrictions in certain sports came with no mention whatsoever of those played indoors. Basketball Ireland are seeking clarity from the government with the national teams due to play at this summer's European Championships uh, without being currently able to train O'Byrne and Basketball Ireland among other national governing bodies who are to meet Jack Chambers uh, the Minister for State for Sport and the Gale Talks early next month, early this month now at this stage, on the 9th uh, of April. Um, under level three restrictions only can indoor facilities open and under level two and level one are they actually be able to use for their intended purposes. So they have a long way to go, it seems, uh, before they get any uh, guidance on when they'll be able to resume indoors. Yeah, I think Bernard Byrne makes a fair point and we're guilty of it here as well, Joe, of focusing on football, rugby, mm. soccer, when they're coming back. There are an awful lot of children who play basketball, who do gymnastics, mm. uh, who aren't even into sport and are doing un- other indoor activities that like, they've been out of for a year and there's no sign of them coming back. No, 100%. 100% and uh, yeah we do get very much caught up I think the lobby group power of the big sports is probably uh, on a different level as well one um, sorry I just was I'm looking at tweets coming in it's amazing <laughs> you have people giving out to you for different reasons uh, do you think this is rife Nathan do you think there's counties up and down the country doing this absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. the amount of and maybe we should have followed up with more of these but you never know who's been a crank and who's not but yeah. there have been any amount of rumours of countless GEA teams doing this now sometimes it's two players getting together for a run sometimes it's an organised session like this but I would be shocked and I'd imagine there's quite a few inter-county managers who are a little bit nervous this evening as to where this goes over the coming days mm. What do you think Rich? Definitely like they, like I mentioned it right there it runs Club in West Cork under investigation for this the exact, like literally the exact same thing as the Dublin footballers uh, by the guards and by uh, Cork GEA like that line in um, in Do They Know It's Christmas by Bono to, tonight, thank God it's them instead of you. Like there's a lot of players I'd imagine thinking that about the Dublin footballers this evening because like th- there's definitely, like it, it goes without saying that this is happening elsewhere. Uh, it might have been happening on the south side of Dublin. There might have been a training session there that we don't know about. There might be, you know, training sessions in Kildare and Galway and, you know, Sligo, wherever. It, it's happening. You're and not convinced, Joe? No, I wouldn't be. No. I'd be really disappointed if that was the case and a little bit surprised. Like January was a very scary month. February wasn't much better. We're into March now and it's improved, obviously. But um, I, I think players getting together in twos and threes and, and that kind of thing, that's fine. You know, people go for jogs together. But no, I, if I found out there were coaches taking sessions at inter-county level now, I, I actually would be surprised. And I think I would, I'd start getting angrier then if it turned out the whole country was at it. Like, they're, then they're taking the mick. Have you ever gone for a jog with, for some, with someone, Joe? I, I, I My just, wife. You, you go, all right, OK. That's acceptable. On occasion. I mean, you and I have never gone for a jog together. No, I'd find it, I'd find it a bit strange. We do everything else <laughs> I'd, together. I'd feel guilty. Just, you know, yeah. dragging. Wait up. You know, come back, please. Yeah, it's not going to happen anytime soon. Uh, tomorrow we're on air at the early time of 5.20. God. Good Friday, Finally, baby. we're getting there. Finally, we're getting there. <laughs> 20 past five for live uh, commentary of Leinster in the Heineken Champions Cup. It's the last 16 against Toulon. Teams have been named, Richie. Yeah, and Leo Cullen has made four changes to his Leinster side for tomorrow's Heineken Champions Cup. Last 16 clash with French Giants Toulon. Johnny Sexton restored to the at-half position, having come through the return to play protocols this week. He replaces Ross Byrne. Elsewhere, James Lowe, Ty Furlong and Ryan Baird come in for Dave Carney, Scott Fardy and Andrew Porter. Senior coach Stuart Lancaster says they're determined to succeed in Europe this season. The last two defeats in the final against Saracens um, in 2019 and in the quarterfinal against Saracens last year, they stung a lot, you know, and, and, you know, we want to be judging ourselves at the top end of Europe and we want to be, um, you know, play, playing the best teams. And, uh, and we know it's knockout rugby, so there's, trust me, there's plenty of motivation in the team this week. Um, even though we were pleased to win last week, we turn the page very quickly, learn what we can do better, move on because um, it's Europe. And this is where Leinster wants to be. You know, we want to be in the, the latter end of the competition and it's knockout rugby. 
Yeah, so big couple of days in the Champions Cup. Leinster tomorrow live commentary and then Munster live commentary as well of their game against Toulouse on Saturday. We're almost out of time, Richie. But I can't believe we didn't start with this. God Go damn the dubs. Oh, no. We could have done an easy 15 minutes on the latest scores from the Valero Texas Open. Go on, Richie. Yeah. Give uh, Graham McDowell with two to play of his opening round. GMAC is Not two the headline, over Richie. Par. Not the headline. Uh, Padraig Harrington, one under through two, Nathan. Come on. Who, who's top of the leaderboard there, Richie? Jordan Spieth has a 60, 70, 500 par. Oh, it's happening. It's happening. Seven days before the Masters, <laughs> Jordan Spieth is leading the tournament. Next week is going to be the most glorious week of golf arguably there's ever been as Jordan sure comes back to take that green jacket again. Oh, beautiful. The Golf Weekly schedule next week. Tuesday podcast, Nathan, Paul McGinley. Wednesday podcast preview. Watch along on Sunday. Connor Moore, aka Connor Sketch, is going to drop in. Monday review podcast. I mean, I would say it's almost too much, but it's not even nearly enough. Considering we are doing a podcast Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> we might even do one Friday, Sunday. If Speed wins on Sunday night, do we have to follow through with our promise to do a special Speed podcast the day after he well, wins? We're doing one on Monday. Either Wouldn't way. it be appropriate on Easter Sunday if Jordan Speed got uh, that long away to victory? Oh, don't go there. I've don't written, go there. I've written don't the commentary already for them. <laughs> text. Nick Doherty, be text. do not steal my lines. There's your BAI complaint, Nathan, right there. God damn it. Speed compared to Christ by Mayo Man. <laughs> Uh, Richie McCormick get on to uh, otbsports.com forward slash golf weekly sign up for some of that Patreon goodness three ninety nine a month and you'll get all those podcasts next week Richie thank you uh, as always cheers lads uh, Joe thank you as well we do have a text in saying lads give me some more of that Ireland Luxembourg analysis <laughs> for the final time this week no for the final time this week John Giles this is it Fair this is the Fair final enough. decision on what happens Giles will allow Giles John will Giles allow. is coming up next <laughs> Feeling came for me stealing.